So yeah, long. yeah. God. Unchangeable God. Okay, unchangeable God. Only you can do what no man can do. Good morning. Good morning and good evening wherever you may be. My name is Sawamboy. Uh, live on Facebook, My Story Show, Pacific Waves International Radio, with the beautiful, beautiful young girl and young lad who has been on the show now several times. 
I am welcoming you. Very excited to have you on stay on on board. Nothing wawero. Wanjiko kiamoka wa Naomi Jerry job maura shiko mojai. Rose Maura Phillips, Kamau Alan Onyango, Isaac Telugate, Binti Mary, Elizabeth Muyake Tabila Kamau. Ah, uh, Elizabeth Muyake Foigo Gay, Robert Aros Arusei, Sami Check Me, Anthony Mboro Nyokabi Fatel. Thank you all for joining in. I am so happy to see you. Hi, Grace, Gere, and Sammy. Foy Kogoge is saying hi to you. Elizabeth is saying, reliable God, that is true. How are you, my dears? We are very good, Binti Mary. Alingema, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So, guys, today we have a very special show. On stage or on the show or in the studio is Samuel Munene and beautiful girl called um Winnie Winnie Mode. She's here today. She's our young lady here who's gonna be talking to us about challenges, about uh youth challenges. And so as we have been saying, summertime it's gonna be all about youth. And uh you all know the people who watched the Kikuyu version on Wednesday. I'm still in Boston having a little vacation, and so my helper, Sammy, is the one in the studio today. So I actually should let you welcome us, Sammy. Over to you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. Um, so, well, welcome back for the people who've been here like every Friday and uh, for the newcomers. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, today's, as you can see, today's topic is um, yes. how, uh, how about youth challenges? Um, what are the challenges that we face, um, you know, throughout, well, well, right now? And to talk more about that, and uh, we'll hear from a young lady and a young man, and then we'll see how we can we can help each other. Yes, yes, specifically challenges from the youth. Uh, we know youth is our future, and so uh, they also do go through challenges just like us grown men and women and so we'll hear more about them now we will play another song as we continue to share and tag and people please remember to share and tag and call people and subscribe to the youtube channel and so as we wait for a good column we're gonna continue listening to victor victory by Eben. welcome uh oh January 2017. Uh, all right, there we go. Hallelujah. 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 
Victory. Thank you. Keep coming in. I see Locked is Kadaya Mahiki. Ruth Wajiko is saying I'm on the road. Hope to catch a glimpse. I hope so too, Ruth. Uh, uh, Biju City is in. Jackie Mwangi. Waihenya was spare parts is watching. Rosalind Miner. Hi to you. Nice to see you on the show, young guys. That is Job Maura. Uh, precious Leah. Hi, Precious. Rosalind Miner. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you all for coming in and for tuning in. Today's show is late. <laughs> Today's show is going to be late. Now, before we start, Winnie, can you tell us, say hi to everybody and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, my name is Winnie, and I'm just happy to be here on the show and to talk about youth challenges and hello to everybody all right good. what is that noise the what there's some noise i don't know if that... some noise. all right make sure make sure the the machines uh, yeah. are off all right Okay, guys. So I think we should just jump in. Hello, Grace, to see you. Hello, Ruth. Okay, I think we should just jump in, and I will I will say a little thing before before we start. Um, Sami, can you kind of recognize some of the people on the line, please, as I oh. look for that? Um, I cannot see them actually. Who just joined in? It's only on your. You can't side. see. Mm. Oh, you can't see comments on your side. Comments, but I just can't see the uh, people who joined in. What's that? I just can't see the people that are joining in. Oh, how come? It's your because it's your live. Oh, but you can see the comments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So now I was gonna look for something to read here. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. So now, guys. We have to do the show this way today because I wasn't able to get to the studio. But I think it's going to be okay and we'll get to what we can get today. I know Winnie doesn't have a lot of time here today, but we'll just do a little bit of something. So as I introduce the topic, today we are talking about the youth challenges today. And... Uh, um, According to a website that I was looking at, we they do have like 10 challenges. And I don't know what you have planned, Winnie, but some of them in a nutshell are like people who have single parenthood are some of the challenges they go through. Some of some other challenges that the youth go through is things like substance abuse. Um, others is like early maturity. And others, so I'm just giving this point as you guys and maybe you can comment on them. Others are like violence in schools, materialism. I didn't know that can be a challenge, materialism. And as you listen, just jot down some points there. Tell us, what do you think of these points that I'm mentioning? And as Winnie and Sam starts talking, please interact and uh, uh, get yourself involved in the show uh, by giving us your comments about these points. Uh, the other one is education disparity and inadequate employment opportunities and poverty and juvenile delinquency. Those are some of the challenges that the youth today face in a nutshell. So in this new age and society, kids enjoy more attention than their, than, than years before. You know, like our ears, you know, I'm old guys, not your ears, my ears. We used to enjoy the, um, in this age, you guys enjoy more than we used to enjoy. And uh, because, let me, let me read as it is written. In this new age, society, kids enjoy more attention than their yesteryear counterparts. You guys enjoy life now than we used to. Despite being advantaged, there's also, also a lot of troubles, right? Would you agree? Um, these youngsters, they are surrounded with innumerable, innumerable, or things that ca we cannot number, problems, which in turn also can make you guys rebellious, and you are free to, <laughs> to, to interact, to, to counter uh, uh, what I'm saying. So, because they are so advantaged, things like social media, um, freedom, specifically in the diaspora, you guys kind of enjoy life more than we do. You know, like you got, you don't even get chapa as we used to. But then also those privileges, they bring trouble and problems. Now, I'm going to throw it to you guys. Winnie, you can start. Tell us what you have prepared and maybe you can mention a little bit of what we have just said. Sammy, what do you think? Oh, I think I me. Um, I don't know. Okay, what you were talking about, what you were talking about, kind of makes sense. Um, we do get a lot, a lot more freedom because of um a lot of things that we've actually gotten possessed of, such as phone, social media, um, and we are inspired. Oh, no, let me not. We're influenced by other people. Um, for example, if I'm on social media and I see like somebody's my age is traveling around the world, um, I would then try to make money and try to travel myself. Um, I don't, I don't know. That's not necessarily like a challenge, but I am just agreeing to what you were saying. Yeah, this is a little, really, really weird noise. I don't know if you can hear it from your side. No. Like, what kind of noise is it? Like, like, like a screech. Like, you know how sometimes the fire alarm goes off? Uh-huh. That kind of noise. I don't know if, uh, viewers, if you can hear that voice noise, let us know. But if the viewers cannot hear it, then we should be good. Because okay. I don't think it's coming from me. Okay, then. Okay, then. Go ahead. All right. So, like, um, so, like, now, like, compared... Okay, so you're talking about in the U.S., right? Not just, not not just Kenya, right? 
Because in the U.S., like, for example, like, there's just a time, like, you just go buy your flight ticket. You don't need, if you're over 19, you just buy a flight ticket and you go to your friends in a different state and you just do that. You can't, you can't do that in Kenya. You, you just can't buy a flight ticket. Yeah. You uh -huh. kind of don't rely on your parents 100%, right? Yes. Yes. We have a lot more freedom, too. Uh-oh. Where did you guys go? <laughs> Wait, yeah. yeah. I heard the sound that you're talking you about. You had it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you hear it still? Yeah. All right. All right. Your turn, Winnie. Um, uh, the topic that you talked about, the substance abuse that you mentioned um, earlier, I thought that one was really important, especially um, a lot... I've seen a lot of my friends when they come here, you know, a lot of them are actually, they, they, were, they were good kids, you know, but I guess because yeah. of like yeah. the culture here in America, um, mm -hmm. you know, kids want to be cool. They want to, they want to fit in. So, you know, sometimes you lose friends to, to mm -hmm. substance abuse. Maybe they're doing things that you don't want to do, you know, and they're involving in things that you don't want to be in. And so um, I think substance abuse is really um, like a challenge that a lot of people face and yeah. a lot of youth face. And mm -hmm. not only is it not good for, for, for themselves, but it's not good for their health either. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, true, true, true. It has lifetime impact. It does. Well, well, thank you so much. I see people are continuing to join us. Koiwa Kimura, Pastor Job, Job. Thank you, Pastor Job, Job. Uh, I sent a message to you. I sent somebody. I sent Jane. So I hope we get to talk soon, uh, Pastor Job. Paul Njogu, uh, Karibu, or oh, welcome. Leah Wakare, welcome. Shiko Kuria, welcome. I see Tim, my, one boy, my story. You are all here. Come on in. Come on in. You guys are my people. Thank you so much. I adore you. You make me feel so humbled. Thank you, guys. Now, today we are talking about youth challenges. And I'm so glad I see we have a pastor watching who can even tell us more what you us or you guys as youth, what we can do, what you guys can do when you face these challenges. Now, Winnie, I know you have something prepared. Can you tell us more about youth challenges? About what? Youth challenges. Tell us what you prepared about youth challenges. Oh, um, the the challenges that yeah, apart from what you just talked about. Now tell us what you have prepared that you came prepared to talk about. Um, I guess I can talk about um educational challenges you know being in okay. school being a youth you know um i think sometimes those can be conflicting things you know because being being a youth is like you're in that stage in life where you're growing you know sometimes school can put a lot of pressure on you on top of being on in that stage of life where you're kind of transitioning from a child to an adult you know and um so yeah just that environment of school it helps you grow but it also challenges you in in many different ways and mm -hmm. i feel like uh for me personally um school has been a challenge even if i'm even if i'm doing well i still feel like i'm i'm just in that stage of life where i'm i'm figuring a lot of things out not just yeah. not just school you know yeah, but a lot of yeah. things in my life that i'm figuring out okay so is it the workload school workload or how would you say what the challenge um yeah especially because me you know being in being in a running start program and doing college that noise in time, back. sorry huh? The noise again. I can hear the noise again. Oh, you can hear it again? Okay, now it's gone. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Especially me. Uh, here we have, you know, like the Running Start program where you do high school and college at the same time. And, you know, mm -hmm. 
it's it's just been a lot for me and I know a lot of youth experience um, especially like my friends they experience a lot of pressure from school you know maybe the workload is too much for them I know that sometimes the workload gets too much for me if I, sometimes you find yourself being so busy you know um, sometimes you just don't get to relax and I think that can make you really stressed out yes and you know guys uh, um, viewers Winnie she's a model too she's a model so I'm thinking you are trying the career the career model and she's really she's really beautiful and tall and a model for real like professional model and, and so and school so that must be really challenging uh, do you feel like the society let me start with the society like they help in any way uh, the, the like, society is like, in who? Huh? As in, well, maybe the church, maybe, maybe, well, the church, the people surrounding you. I don't want to come to family first. That's a question by itself. But does that alleviate or make your challenges worse? School challenges, your your workload. Um, I feel like. You know, family definitely makes it easier and harder at the same time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just really how? You no, know, family is encouraging. And of course, they want you to succeed. They want you to help, you know. But being in school and also being a youth, you have to you have to balance family life, school life, if you work, you know, too. Um, I work personally. And so it's also work life you have to balance as well. So, you know, being able to balance all those sections of your life can be, can be a good thing and also a hard thing at the same time. You know, yeah. The, the community wow. does. You are, you, are a, you, are, you are a very strong lady then. If you also work, that I see my son, he's only in, he, he's only in junior high and the school work is a lot. So having to do all those things, uh, <laughs> think it's and I know you're also active in church that yeah. that tells me what the kind of a lady you are a young lady um so us as immigrants uh, we've been talking about immigrant parents how is it for you from the school perspective how is that for you the school perspective having an immigrant that, parent yeah, does, that, does that make a difference that you are a yeah. foreigner? Let me use that word. I feel like, like um, you know, my mom, well, the reason why they even came here in the first place was to get a better life for us, you know? So, um, so in school, I've always felt a lot of pressure to do really good, you know, to, to always keep my grades really high and, and to always, and to always exceed in everything I do, not just, not just in studies, but in sports, in music, you know, to yeah. do well in all those sectors. But I feel like having an, an immigrant parent personally um, has been, has been a good thing and a bad thing, um, especially because my mom, she's always helped me with everything in school, you know, if I was having a challenge in school, if I, if I couldn't even do my homework, she would sit down and she would like learn math with me, you know, but I feel like yeah. it's also been a lot of pressure to also do really good because you don't want to disappoint them. Yeah, yeah, now Sammy, yeah, can Sammy come to the, so <laughs> my, my question is this, uh, she said her mom helps her with, with math and you know, schoolwork. I have a challenge, uh, me as a parent and as a migrant parent, Every time I've ever sat down with my kids to help them with their homework, it's so different from how I learned. Maybe it's algebra. I remember my son when he was doing algebra because he had to do a class higher. Uh, it was so different from what I used to do. So I don't know, Sammy, did you have that problem? Like when you went to ask your mom to help you with math or something, the way they're showing you, it's not how you guys do it here. You guys experience that? Yeah, I experienced that sorry mm -hmm. Sammy. No, you're fine. You're fine. Go on. My mom, she didn't know like in Kenya, you guys have different ways of doing math. Yeah, totally. So that's why I'm like, oh, oh she did help you. I wonder how. She, she honestly she learned it and then she taught me how to do it, you know. So she she gathered all my work and we worked it through together. Wow. You know, <laughs> that was one of my big, big problems. Um, 
a lot, especially the math, especially the math. And, you know, so Sami, what's your take? Um, my take, I don't see, I don't think, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't, I don't recall myself going to my parents for homework pro, um, problems. You never thinking, went? Nah, I think I just went to my sister. <laughs> Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, no, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. And you have a bigger sister. And I bet even uh, Winnie goes to Maggie. And Maggie, we had Maggie last week, guys, if you guys can remember. I think you can hear even the voice. Winnie's voice is just like her sister's. <laughs> so we are privileged to have you guys on the show back to back. And uh, just another disclaimer, this is my story show. Um, Pacific Waves International Radio English version with Winnie Mode uh, bringing us the topic challenges, youth challenges. And Sami is co-hosting with us. He's been he's been with us uh, for the past two weeks in the English version show. And so we are so happy to have him here and Winnie. And my name is Womboi Grace, uh, bringing you the, the show live on facebook from boston massachusetts <laughs> did i say that right <laughs> sammy don't laugh at me <laughs> You're fine. Anyway, you know my daughter is right here i'm like i i thought she was gonna say no you did not say right so i said did i say that she goes like <laughs> <laughs> She gives me a hard time when I say words that are not the way they're supposed to be mm -hmm. said. Challenges of an immigrant parent. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should do that one next. Huh? We should do that topic next. Which one? Prob uh, the yeah. challenges of an immigrant parent. I know. We should do that, right? You know what? We're going to be bringing parents soon. So we'll do that. <laughs> Estambul is saying you're doing very well. Blessed, thank you. Rachel Kenyajui, thank you for coming in and stay right there. Uh, uh, Boss Rich, thank you. Joanne Moragoli, Moragoli, Wanjiko Moragoli, thank you for coming in. Celia Suku and Jones, Caitlin Fry, thank you. Good evening to you. Rachel Njuguna is watching. Marion Kamumo, you need to come out. All right. Now, what other thing is the challenge? Or, uh, Sami, would you comment on Winnie's uh, challenge of education? What do you have to say about it? Um, I feel, okay, I feel the challenges that, that we face, you know, like how, like, a lot of, okay, a lot of older generations, like, when they hear that, you know, we, we have computers, we have all this unlimited resources to find um, or, or uh, to find the answers that we need. They feel like just because we have it, it's easier for us when it's really not. Like, mm -hmm. just because we have a computer doesn't mean it makes our work less. That means it makes our work much harder because teachers will become smart and put things that, you know, sometimes won't be easy to find or like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, like, you know, there's also, you know, fake sites where they just post things of people's um, opinions. And like with that, you can't really trust that source. So which means you have to dig deeper to find a reliable source. And I'm talking like on behalf of like if you're doing a research paper or anything like that, you just can't trust everything that you read. Yeah. And yeah. So this, just because we have you know, we have Google and whatever we search up doesn't make our work easier. So like with the challenges of education, not just math becomes um, the only struggle, but also in other aspects, chemistry as well. Um, yeah. Well, for me, honestly, like honestly, like for me, because I go to a private institution, I feel mm -hmm. like uh, we have it a little bit easier than people who go to public institutions. Oh, so, really? Yeah. How? Mm -hmm. Because, um, so a class, for example, one of my college classes, I was the only student. So it's only, You're the only student? Mm -hmm, in one of my classes. Like alone? Yeah, I was the only How? student. 
That's what really? I'm saying. Yeah, it's a private institute. So, like, you have that more of a one on one time with the DJ. Or sometimes, oh. even if you're in a classroom, you can have up to like 15, 12 people in a class. So, you have more uh -huh. time with the teacher. Wow, wow, that's something. Then, if you go to a public university, there's like 40 people in the class. Like, by the oh, end of the, oh. at the end of the semester, the teacher should know your name, but they don't because there's so many people in the class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So by our school, it's like the, literally like the next month, our teachers already know our names or have an idea of who we are. So and then we get and and, and the one on one is even better. The one on one is even better. Um, I think it's give or take. It's not it's not as easy as you think, but it's easy. Yeah. 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 So with that, I mean, and also like if you're about me being the only one, it kind of makes it hard because I may not, for example, like if you have a, if you have like um, a class with 12 people, you can literally go and like talk, discuss the class with somebody else. And like, you know, the struggle that you have with that class with another mm -hmm. peer. But if it's just you and the teacher, like you can only see two, you can only see two, um, two views of the class. Your view yeah. of not understanding what you know what's happening in the class, I and mean, the teacher is like, you should understand this already. But then there's nobody else in the class that's really like, you don't know like if it's easy or I don't I don't know if I'm explaining it right. But if you have like a class with like a bunch of students, um, you guys can like, if there's a problem, you can see that there's a problem because there's there's more than one person facing that problem. Yeah. Yeah, but if, yeah. You're only, if you're the only one in the class and you have facing a problem, the teacher will just feel like you're not reading enough. Yeah, yeah. You are the only one. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. But uh, all right. Uh, Thank you so much, Gladys. Gladys for watching. Um Tab Stabs. Hello, hello, Tab Stabs. Karanja Bobby is watching. Tabi uh Jen Mungai, Rachel Kinyanjui. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming in. Now, uh, Winnie, what other challenges do the youth face, specifically here in diaspora? And before you say that, I will play a little bit of a song here uh, so you can prepare your thoughts and tell us what other challenges do the youth face, specifically here in the diaspora? Okay. So let's listen to this song and then we'll continue from there.
Winnie, I know Winnie, you don't have a lot of time, so maybe you can tell us one more challenge and then we can see how to overcome them and then we're gonna get done. Okay, uh, I guess my last challenge would be uh, single parents, and this one is also one that you mentioned earlier when you were speaking. Um, yeah. you know, coming here to the United States at first, personally, my parents were together at first, you know, and then they separated later on five or six years later. And mm -hmm. so the biggest challenge for me was not really the separation because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was okay with it, you know, but it was, it was the community. It was not okay with it. You know, I think in the Kenyan community, we have this like, oh, you have to stay together even if it's not a good relationship, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, people would always ask, like, oh, why why aren't your parents together, you know, like, oh, your mom needs to get back with your dad, blah, 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 you know, and mm -hmm. they would come to you directly? Yeah, they would say it, you know, and oh. so, um, and so it would just, it would, it would not become okay, like, for me, and I think that is, like, a point personally in my life, and maybe some other people who have single parents here have experienced this where you, you just don't want to talk to people, you know? Mm -hmm. You become less social, I guess you could say. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad that you have such an open mind that you can think like that, that if, if, if things are not okay, it's also okay to be like that. Uh, what's your take on that, Sami? See, I don't... <clears throat> about the whole uh, single parent thing? <laughs> The, the, yeah, the, the, the single parent household. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it because I've never, like, experienced that. And I don't want to say things mm. like out of pocket. Mm. But, I mean, like, at the end of the day, um, I just respect people's decision. Mm -hmm. um, they know why they chose that path. We don't. Yeah. So mm. just let them be because we are humans and we just need to. And I feel like people just mind mind their own business when it comes to certain things. Like honestly, like there's some things that you just if it's it's not your that's not your life. Like focus on you. Don't be too concerned about what other people are doing. Um even I guess I guess that's the challenge that I face. You know, people are too much into your business. Yeah. You know, yeah. as as a youth. Like, for example, one of the things I've actually come to realize that I don't like being asked is what I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. Because I really don't know what I want to do in life. Because like I'm as I grow, I'm I'm learning new things. I'm like interested in new things and other things are fading out. But like when people are you know, like constantly like in your business, like what's going on in their life, I just I just don't know how to answer that so I tell them of what I feel like I want to do in the moment but then they get mad when they see that I'm that's not what I'm pursuing later on I'm like you know, that is something that I'm constantly struggling with as I find myself and um just people just being nosy and stuff <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's not that price. Specifically, us where we come from, you know, we I keep coming back to us, my migrants, because we are brought up in a place where we know that a family is of two parents and kids and children, right? And so when yeah. somebody is meant to touch, it's a little bit difficult for the community to understand. And and then there's this stigma that that happens here in America. And um, I, 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 I don't know why it seems so. Maybe because they keep data, which I would imagine other places do. 
Mm -hmm. um, or maybe people are more outspoken about it, you know, because like kids, you know, you, you get that open mind that, well, they choose their own path. They know why they choose it. And life still has to continue going on. And I'm sorry, viewers, somebody told me that they, they're wanting to write comment, but for some reason, they are not able to. So I don't know what's going on with that. I try to look to see if my comments, they're not turned off. And, and if somebody knows how to, I can check that. You can tell me. But I know, Maria, you wanted to put a comment, but it won't let you. So anybody who knows how to turn on comment, you can let me know. I don't know why it's not letting me. Um, so yes, I'm still in Boston. I don't know who is that. Who is asking? Let me see. Somebody asked if I'm still in Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tabs, tabs. I'm still in Boston. That's why I have Sammy and Winnie in the studio representing me there. So yeah, you know, those things do happen. Those things do happen. People being nosy, people minding other people's business. And as youth, I see where how that can be a challenge because it's your life, it's your life. They shouldn't be bothered. If you and your mom, your mom or dad are together or not, I don't think it should be anybody's business, right? So I agree with you there. Now, as we come to a close, I have a few things that I can mention because I know there are so many challenges in this life. Whether you are a youth, whether you are an adult, we all face challenges. But there are some things I would tell you guys as youth and the fellow youth listening and even grown men and women who are listening. I would say that there are a few things that we can do that can help us overcome some of these challenges. And that's why my story, one of the reasons my story was created is to help us overcome challenges so that we don't find ourselves in a fix, in a hole where we feel like, oh, I even better not be alive. Yeah. So one of the challenge, one of the ways of facing challenges, according to psychology today, is Facing challenges intentionally. You got to face them intentionally. Don't run away from them. Don't run away from your troubles. I will say, I will say them very quickly in a, in a summary form. So you can also turn towards reality. Often we turn away from life rather than towards it. You know, you're facing this thing, so... You're going to assume it's not there. You're going to turn away. You're not going to face it. The writer here is, is telling us, don't avoid. Don't be a master of avoidance. Be present. Enjoy life and be effective in it. Orient yourselves by facing forward to reality. Okay? Be guided by the reality principle. That way you will develop deal, uh, uh, how to deal with life effectively. Number two, embrace your life as is, it is rather than as you wish it to be. You know wishes? What do they say about wishes? If wishes were horses, everybody would ride. So you might wish Sammy's life and Sammy might wish for Winnie's life. But that's not how it was intended. Live your life as it is. All the youth listening, live your life as it is. Um, the secret to life is to want what you have and not to not want what you don't have. That's Busa. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. The secret to life is to want what you, you have. Huh? I've heard of it. Saying, you have heard it? Yeah. Yes. The secret to life is to want what you have, not what you don't. But you know what? Sometimes, a lot of times, we want what we don't have. I want what I see Winnie having. I want your hair. I want your t-shirt. I want your your maroon t-shirt, uh, Sami. And you want my mm -hmm. my printed thing <laughs> that I'm wearing. <laughs> you know, that's just life. But the secret is to want what you want. In any, there's a very good thing here that I like. They say, the freedom in taking life as it comes to us, you take the good with the bad, the wonderful with the tragic, the love with the loss, the life with the death, and embrace it all. Then, then you have a real chance to enjoy life. The other ones, I will not elaborate on them, but I'll just say in, in just, you know, like, take your time. That's another thing. Practice gratitude. 
stay close to your feelings even if they are yeah. painful and accept success and failure as part of life's journey and tend to your loving relationships yeah that's it so that that's very beautiful if we had more time to elaborate on them now we're going to end this program today and i mm-hmm. thank you so much thank you winnie from the bottom of, of my heart you had uh, something to do at nine. i hope it's not what time is it over there i'm three hours uh-huh. ahead that's 8:36. I hope you make it. Oh, I hope you make it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <Come on. laughs> Thank you. That's why guys we had to do the show early because our guest had uh, couldn't wait until 11 when we usually do our show. And then the time is so oh, I'm all messed up with the time because over here I'm 3 hours ahead of you guys. <laughs> and but I appreciate I appreciate you Winnie for coming for giving us the challenges and I hope Everybody who was listening got something from you. And if they are in a place, or if you're in a place, anybody listening to me, that you feel life is not worthy, uh, go back to my videos. Go back to my story videos. There's a lot of encouragement there from young people like Sami and Winnie and Maggie and others to come for this summer. This summer is all dedicated to youth and what they go through and how we can encourage each other. And I'll put... I'll put on the description some um, some websites that I usually put there that if you want to talk to somebody, there's a national lifeline there. If you feel you don't want to live anymore, you want to commit suicide, there's a place you can talk to somebody 24-7. If you want to talk to me, you can talk to me. Thank you, Team One Boy. My story, I see uh, some of you have stuck with me to the end. Thank you so much. Sammy. Thank you so much. God bless you for standing up in the gap for me in the studio because this is awesome and you've been here. This is your third week or fourth week? My third. Yes. I I don't take that for granted. Uh, probably we should go out for lunch or something. <laughs> <laughs> and we and me and Mikey. So I appreciate so much. So thank you guys. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day today. And we'll see each other on Friday, right? Yes. <laughs> Probably before that, but, you know. So, viewers, thank you. I love you all. I'll see you on Wednesday, the ones who come to Kikuyu Version Show. Um, the Kikuyu, my story, Kikuyu Version. I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you all, and bye-bye. Love you.